I thought it was a perfect time to paint up my Asian models from the Nether Maze box and the Date Master from the Echoes of Doom box. And to get things going, I'm going to be starting off with the head assassin himself, Date Master Martyr. The idea that I came up with was that these are the assassin clan known as the Red Knight and are survivor slaves from the clan's scurvy slave ships. As usual, I primed the model with Halford's Grey Primer Spray. The first thing I wanted to get was all the base colours down and I started with the skin. And I wanted a paler look on skin tone, so I went to two thin down layers of flayed one flesh. Next was his clothes, and instead of going with the usual Mechanica standard grey, I went with the slightly darker Asian grey. The only part that left alone was the hood, that's going to be painted a different colour later on. Lead Belcher was then painted on the armour parts, the bangles on the tail, the knee pads and the weapons. Having just silver weapons is a reliable choice, but lately it feels like I rely on the silver base, null and oil shade and a silver highlight a little bit too much. This sounds like an idea for a future video, but for now, Lead Belcher will do the job. With the teeth, nails and the weapons next, I went with Zandri Dust. It's off yellowish works great for those parts, especially the teeth and the nails. The next part is what I want the Red Knight signature look to be. Within the darkness, the last thing the unfortunate victim will see is a swooshing red blur before they are killed. A part of the clan's attire is that a piece of clothing must be of the clan's colour of darkish red. As for the Deathmaster Martyr, his hood is the chosen piece and is based in Mephiston Red. The last few base colours were added to the base with Astronite Granite on the flap and Mechanica Standard Grey on the wall. Before I move on to the shading, I almost forgot a small part of the model, and that's the fur. And it can be easily missed because there is very little of it. But there are patches just under his jaw and on his legs, and was painted with Mornfang Brown. I was going to go with a grey fur, but the model had enough grey on it, so I went with the brown instead. With the base is dry, Basilicanum grey was used on the grey clothes. I've been trying this shade a lot more lately, and it's a great alternative to just null and oil, a lighter alternative. I'm also trying a new contrast paint that I just got and it's Flesh Terror's Red. I was looking for what to shade the red with because it's an pretty important colour of the clan and I didn't want to just add Agrax or shade on it. After looking around YouTube, I found a video by Juan Hidaglo Miniatures called Ridiculously Red Cape and I used some of its paints from the video. Link in the description below, check it out, it's a great video. I had painted the wraps teeth and nails with Zantry dust earlier and for the wraps I didn't want to go with Agrax Earthshade as I'd usually do so I went to Surf from Sepia just to give that bleached or faded look instead of having it just look dirty. But I did switch to Agrax Earthshade for the teeth and the nails because I did want that part to have a dirty look. I also spread it on the bottom part of the base but not yet on the wall. But to make the wall stand out a little bit more, I shaded it all with a Tonian camera shade and I'll come back to it later when it's a little bit dry. Null and oil was then applied to all the silver parts including the metal fence and the icons on the wall. When it came to the flesh, and since I'm wanting to keep it pale, so instead of Gulliman flesh I went to a Reichland flesh shade and made sure not to let it start pulling up in the deeper parts of the hands and the feet. With the Atonian camera shade dry, I started to add Agrax earth shade to some individual bricks on the wall to help them stick out a bit more. After all the shading has dried, it's time to move on to the highlights, and I started on the grey claws. I chose Dawnstone and I highlighted it along the edges and in the highest parts. For the red on the hood, I went with Wild Rider Red to highlight the edges. This highlight really brings the hood to life and I'm really happy that the Flesh Terror's Red didn't darken the base colour too much. To finish off the silver parts, I highlighted the edges of the weapons, armour and silver parts on the base as best I could with Stormhole Silver. When it came to the skin, I was a little weary about highlighting it because I didn't want to brighten the skin back up too much. But I went with flayed one flesh and for most of the parts it was just the higher edges on the hand and the feet. But I added a bit more of a layer when it came to the tail. 
On parts of his weapons, he has some poison on him, so I based him in Detgard Green. And while I was waiting for that to dry, I realised that I hadn't highlighted the wraps, so I went back to Flayed One Flesh and I started highlighting the edges very delicately and as best as I could do it. To finish off the model, the last parts were added. Dawnstone was lightly brushed on the base and on the wall, and the poison of the blaze was finished with a generous layer of Nurgle's Rot, and onto the base to make it look like it's dripping down onto it. And with all the colours down, what I'm left with is this. And with that, the former scurvy slaves are ready to stalk the night streets of Fair Farrig. The other members were all kept in the same team, with having parts of their clothing being red, like a cloak or a hood. But I'm really happy how the Death Master turned out, and hopefully you got something from this video. And I'm sure the Red Knight have a lot more hidden in the shadows, but for now, we're just gonna have to wait and see.